I would like to introduce our first speaker. Our first speaker this afternoon is John Probus. John Probus is Professor of Cement Materials Science and Engineering at the University of Sheffield in the UK. He's an invited TAC expert of Rylam, a voting member of committees of ACI, ASTM, and BSI. He's editor-in-chief of the Rylam flagship journal Materials and Structures, and he's an associate editor of Cement and Concrete Research. Professor Provis has published more than 240 journal, article, journal articles and leads a highly active research team which is developing and validating innovative cements for use in the construction sector and in nuclear waste immobilization. When we asked John, can alkali activated materials compete with Portland cement? He responded, should alkali activated materials compete with Portland cement? And so thank you, John, for joining us today. And I will turn it over to you to answer that question for us. Thank you. Thank you very much for the introduction. As, as Robert has said, I was given the title, Can Alkali Activated Materials Compete with Portland Cement? And in the true spirit of being an academic, I, I think the exam question. So the exam question I chose to answer is, should alkali activated materials compete with Portland Cement? Um, so as we're looking at the question of competition, we need to understand the starting point here. And as a, let's say, as a well-known and widely quoted act, um, advocate of alternative cements, um, some of what I say about Portland cement may surprise some people. But I think Portland cement is actually a genuinely amazing material. It's a precision engineered product. It's incredibly robust. Its CO2 footprint per, per ton of material is low, but the number of tons of material we make is enormous. So that three gigatons per annum approximate CO2 footprint is, is really driving the search for alternatives. And we need any credible alternative that we're, we're looking at or thinking about needs to be robust, available, and cheap. And that's a big ask. That is a really, really big ask. So the question I would choose to look at is why does an alternative need to be a single material? We need one size fits all. I particularly like the look on the face of this cat in the box in the middle. And I say I particularly, just in today's events where I was sitting in an important meeting this afternoon with senior members of my department and a cat came and bit me on the arm, I'm quite happy that a cat's looking grumpy on that slide. Um, we don't need one size fits all. We don't want one size fits all. What we want is the right material for each job. So the question of can alkali activated materials compete with Portland cement on a one-to-one -one basis, like for like replacement? Across the board, no. In the right applications, absolutely. So there the question is, should we try to compete? Do we try in bringing a new material into the market? Do we try to do everything all at once? Or do we play to our strengths? Do we say, here are some special performance characteristics, chemical resistance, fire resistance, versatility, alkali activated materials are an incredibly versatile binding system because you've got multiple components where you can dial up and down performance, um, dial up and down, in some ways, dial up and down CO2 emissions. You can trade off emissions against performance, against, um, against cost in a lot of ways, based on the materials available locally, the sustainability arguments, the, the claims of, of low CO2 output are often made and are often valid. I won't say are always valid because there are circumstances in which alkali activated materials can have a higher carbon footprint than Portland cement, particularly if you've got a lot of raw materials being, well, let's say the activator being generated through a lot of electrical processes in an area that has a high CO2 footprint for its uh, electrical energy generation. And there are some high profile studies in the literature that show actually very high CO2 footprints for alkali activated material production based on the energy blend of Southeastern Australia 10 years ago, which was essentially just brown coal, which is a lot like burning dirt, the, the, the quality of the, the coal that's there, wet dirt. So if you're in an area like that, your sustainability arguments fall down. If you've got green electricity to make 
the, the particular parts of your um, alkyl activated blend that require electrical energy input, you can get a much better CO2 footprint. So we have a material with special characteristics in terms of performance and in terms of potential sustainability arguments, but we do not have a universal solution. We do not have a, I'd say, one size fits all competitor. Nor do I think we want one. I would actually say that the strength in the cement's ecosystem, as we look at it now and going forward, is in its diversity. It's when we're looking at moving away from a single universal cement, moving towards a toolkit. It has been said, and I will continue to say, when you only have a hammer, the whole world starts to look like a nail. Our view of the problems that we can solve is coloured significantly by our impression, our mindset of which tools we have available to solve those problems. If we start thinking more creatively about the tools that are available, not just alkyl activated cements, across the board in alternative cements, we find ourselves opening up new avenues to do better. So instead of, I have a Portland cement, I can replace some of it with a supplementary material, we start thinking about which among my toolkit is the best cement to use. Now, the answer will often be Portland cement, it will often also not be Portland cement. And that is, that's where the complementarity comes in. Why do I think alkyl activation is a valuable part of this toolkit? Well, many of the things that we blend with Portland cement can, can be used directly in alkyl activation. The supplementary cementitious materials, blast furnace slag, fly ash, calcine clays, all of these are useful directly in alkyl activation and have the beauty of established supply chains. There's silos of them already sitting where we need them. Now, we can't use them by themselves in the general sense. Some unusual fly ashes we can. But in general, they're less reactive than clinker. They don't react fast enough with water. So we need to chemically activate. And because they are diverse, we need to choose the right chemical activator for them. This is an opportunity. Portland cement clinker in a very high volume blended cement effectively becomes an alkyl activator. When we talk about the, the top end in the European standards, we have a class of cement that's called SEM3C, which is in a lot of cases, or it's over 80% replacement of Portland cement by blast furnace slag, between 80 to 95% blast furnace slag in that cement. When you've got five or 10% Portland cement, your cement isn't acting as a cement, it's acting as an activator for the slag. So you ask the question, is this actually what I want to be doing with my cement? Is this how I want to spend my Portland cement? I've got a material that's optimized and works beautifully as a cement. Why would I use it just as a source of essentially hydroxide ions? Why would I use it just to, just to tweak the chemistry to make something else react? It's not what the cement is intended for. And it's not the best way to unlock the performance of our supplementary cementitious material. There will be cases where Portland cement is the right blend of mineral phases to unlock the performance of an SCM, but that won't always be the case. In a lot of cases, the combination of some Portland cement and some additional alkali can look very attractive in this. So we're moving away from, let's say, considering cements that are 80, 90% Portland with a little bit, some, little bit of something blended into them, moving towards a mindset of a purpose-designed cement where you have the whole suite of available constituents, including additional alkali activators, and you ask the question, what's the best way to unlock the performance of the material I have available? And alkali activation holds a lot of potential in this space. It's not a new idea been around for 1895 was the earliest pack we could find. A lot of important work in 1940 as well in understanding how, how it comes together. So when, you, when people say, oh, this, this new idea has never been thought of before, before um, a lot of the, the ideas in this area are not as new as we would like to pretend they are. In some ways, there's a strength. But now, they didn't have the environmental drivers for commercialization at this point in time. 
And it turns out Portland cement and its versatility took over and was essentially dominated, kept these cements out of the market until fairly recently in most countries. But does this mean, mean it needs to be competition or can we look at complementarity? Portland cement is successful because it's rarely the worst answer. It's rarely the worst material. Nobody was ever sacked for specifying Portland cement. This doesn't mean that in any given circumstance, it's going to be the best one to choose. But it's really going to be the worst, and that's its strength. It's pretty good at doing an extraordinarily wide range of things. It's robust. It has the performance characteristics you need to do just about everything. Even if it's not specialized for particular applications, and that opens up possibility for alkyl activated materials and other cements to give us technical or other characteristics that are valuable in a given application. Now, where I will say there's competition, and I'm certain Karen's going to, go to mention this in her, her um, remarks as well, is competition for raw materials, um, whether they being used as SCMs or being used as precursors, slag and fly ash in particular in this area. So the question is, how do we make the best use of the resources? Are we making the best use of these and of our Portland cement resource by doing a simple Portland SEM blend? Or does a hybrid activation mechanism where you've got an alkyl activator and Portland, or does a straight up alkyl activated uh, system actually get the best value from the materials available? This will differ in each scenario, but we need to keep our eyes open for it. We use the word competition to assume a one size fits all replacement. But when we look at complementarity, we start to have a toolkit. And my view, and what I put to you this afternoon or this evening, is that what we need to go forward in a sustainable way is the subtlety of being able to select from a toolkit, to choose the right tool for each job. And so I'll leave it there and very happy to continue the discussion as we come through. Thank you very much for that presentation.